Okay. So today's scripture is going to be from Revelations chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. Somebody want to pull it up and read it for us? After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes and from where have a, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. All righty. So um, this past weekend, and then the week before that, we celebrated a special time in the church. Uh, November 1st is known on the church calendar as All Saints Day. And so we look at, in the Christian calendar, Halloween as a time called Hallow's Eve. Hallow meaning saints, which points to the night before All Saints Day. So. We already have this type of language, even in our secular culture. So Christians um, can celebrate on the day of November 1st, or most often we celebrate on the Sunday following that day. So All Saints Day is a day that we set aside in the church to remember everybody um, that we, like, that the Catholic Church prays to as saints, but also just like everybody who has passed on before us. The people in our lives who used to worship with us and who are no longer here. I think it's a really important day in, it was in John Wesley's life, but also in our own. Because when we think about the next upcoming holidays, they're really big holidays in the church. And if you just lost someone, that's really gonna hurt. Um, but the joy of being Christians is that we know they're not really lost. Instead of worshiping, worshiping with us here on earth, they're worshiping with us in heaven. And so this day of All Saints Day and All Saints Sunday is a day to remember that they are not really gone, but they're with Christ. Um, so as we continue to celebrate, those days can be joyful and we can be happy because they are still present with us in a different way. So we celebrate all the people who have done God's good works, both known and unknown. Uh, denominations differ on some of the things for who we celebrate and why and how. So if you celebrate in a different denomination, you might want to look into that theology. Um, but all Christian denominations agree that this day is something to celebrate those who have gone before us and who are now present with God in heaven. Sorry, I'm making sure I don't skip anything in my notes. So this is a day um, that we've set aside to honor these dead and honor our grief, not just in funerals, but in worship. Uh, it's a time where we celebrate their memories and celebrate God's mercy. So many of us here today uh, have that heaviness within our hearts about loss of someone dear to us, our own saints, those especially who we loved, who have died. Um, and 
in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, it reminds us that these saints are a great cloud of witnesses. And also in Revelations, we hear of this great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us and they cheer us on. So today I invite you to join in a moment of silence to remember that cloud of witnesses. And I will end our time with a meditative prayer. So at this time, I'm gonna read a little prayer for us. As you listen to it, meditate on the one that you loved. Meditate on those who you know have gone before you to be with God. So please bow your heads in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the saints who ever worshiped you, whether in a brush arbor or in cathedrals, weathered wooden churches or crumbling cement meeting buildings where your name was lifted and adored. We give you thanks, O God, for the hands lifted in praise, manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands, those gnarled with age, holy hands, used as wave offerings across the land. We thank you, God, for hardworking saints, whether hard-hatted or steel-booted, head ragged or aproned, blue-collared or three-piece suited, they left their mark on the earth for you, for us, and for our children to come. Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, God, and may we learn how to walk wisely from their example of faith, dedication, worship, and love. And this we pray in your name. Amen. At this time, typically we do a um, discussion, but instead, today, we're going to light some candles. So typically at churches, whenever we do these types of services, we light candles in honor of the person who has passed. So we're going to do that today. Um, as I read their name, we're going to light a candle for them. So. Mark Richard Colton. We have Webster Atkins. We have Johnny Ventura Santa Stephen. these candles as a reminder that even though their presence is not physically with us anymore when we go to worship, their light is still with us. Their light is with us in our hearts, but then also in Christ. So because these, these people love Christ, and as we get to know Christ and grow closer to Christ, we will grow closer to them. So as we go, please remember that light that is still in the world, even though their presence is physically gone. this time, go and be the light of Christ wherever you are, with whomever you are, and share that love. Amen. 